Hello and welcome to the Built Environment Marketing Show. And yes, it is the last of our live interviews here on LinkedIn in honour of my podcast name change. Uh, and it is Friday. I don't know why I was thinking it's Monday. It's not, it's Friday. And I'm your host, Iowa Bass, uh, Marketing Director at Bass Marketing. And today, my guest is Hannah from Creative Communications, who is a creative communications consultant. So my icebreaker question uh, for me today is to tell me the most creative thing you've done this past week. And if you can, and if you're watching us live, if you can leave your comments in the comments underneath the live, that'll be great. And I can read some of them out, but it also tells me that people are actually watching us, which is great. Um, anyway, so I've got an answer prepared already, obviously, because I wrote the question. So <laughs> on Sunday, I went to go and see uh, Frozen on stage in London, and it was exceptional. It was so, so brilliant from the sets to the music to the singing. And my seven year old basically sat on the end of his seat, edge of his seat all the time, just like, wow. So that was amazing. Frozen, definitely go and see it if you can. Uh, yeah, that was my most creative thing this week. And Hannah, what was your most creative thing? Impressive. Uh, yeah, just trying to think now. Obviously, uh, I think I went to see a film, a finished film called Girls, Girls, Girls. So that was, uh, um, I can't remember the name of the director, but it was fantastic. It was just like a, a dip into a teenager's world um, in a really positive way. So that was, and it had a great soundtrack, which is always Fantastic. Good. So if anyone else has done anything exciting or creative, it doesn't have to be as, as exciting of what we've done, but I'd love to hear it in the comments. And I've got a hi from Stacey, which means she's watching us live. Yay, someone's there, which is always good. So... Yeah. If you've got any questions as we're going through this session, all you need to do is pop them in the comments and we will answer them at the end. Uh, and that's one of the brilliant things about doing this live. It's way more engaging and interactive, so that's good. And today we are looking at all things to do with securing, I guess, securing press without projects. And my guest today is Hannah Cox. So Hannah, do you want to do a bit of an intro to yourself and what you do? Sure, yeah. So um, I'm working uh, PR, mainly for architects and designers, with, with that kind of a, a nucleus of what I do. Bit of an all-rounder. Um, I'm a solopreneur. I think that's the phrase, isn't it? And, it is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but so I work with uh, helping brands, individuals, small businesses, anyone with a real purpose um, to get their work out there, heard, um, and to grow their business. I've got, oh, we got someone else who's done something exciting and creative, which is Julia Nichols. She says, I went to see amazing Julian, is it KNXX? I don't know how you say that, Knox. I don't know, at Brixton House Theatre. Obviously, I have no idea who that is, but sounds good. <laughs> I don't, is it how you spell Knox? No, it can't be, or I'm just being really like, yeah. Um, okay, so actually, let's start off where I know we had, in our intro, we had a quick discussion. So what is the difference between press and PR? Let's start off there. Uh -huh. Thanks. I, that's a really good point. So um, I always say to, to to clients that PR doesn't stand for press. So PR is public relations. It's about growing your reputation. Um, and in order to do that, you can really draw on many different strands in the kind of marketing mix. Press or media relations, getting stuff published um, is just one element of that. And I would think it's the tip of the iceberg. It's the most visible part of public relations. There's a whole lot of stuff that goes on behind that. Um, in terms of, you know, planning, sorting out your tone of voice, working with your objectives and goals. And then, you know, you come up with different tools to try and reach those goals and objectives. Um, yeah, so press is just one part. It's fun. Um, you know, I still get a thrill whenever I see a, a client's piece that's landed and, you know, wherever it is, really, it's just, it is, it is a real thrill for me. So I know it is for, for clients as well. Um, it is important, but there are many, many different elements within within the whole PR process. So for the sake of this session, we're going to talk more about yeah. PR, aren't we, overall, rather than just press? Because it's a wider discussion there. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, we, as we were saying earlier as well, the whole nature of um, press, of that, of, you know, what you think of as, you know, the thud factor, we used to call it, of like, you know, the weighty kind of magazines landing <laughs> through your doorstep, the, you know, the newspapers stacking up. Media's just changed. Um, you know, Clearly. there's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, we we're saying, you know, magazines used to be a lot thicker. Um, there used to be fewer places where um, brands could put their marketing budget in. So they would do a lot more print publication, print advertising and advertising funds. Um, the 
magazines. It's kind of quite, quite a simple, um, you know, business model, really. And when you don't have as many advertisers, you're going to have fewer pages, um, you know, and the, there have been so many changes with publishing houses. Um, basically, it's much more fragmented in terms of print. Um, and then, you know, we've got so many gazillion different sorts of other channels for um, publishing platforms like LinkedIn, yeah. um, you know, um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the online, all the online uh, publications um, as well, that are online only, something like Dazine, for example. Yeah, which is that. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, that was revolutionary when that came out, wasn't it? But also, I kind of think there's also that thing of just understanding the business model of, of often of the publishing houses now, which is very much some of these magazines are lost leaders, right? Aren't they? And actually, they make their money from their events and from their conferences and actually all of that kind of stuff and having sponsors and sending the, you know, having 200 tables at the Grosvenor. That's where they make that money, that 10 grand table, rather than the subscriptions anymore. It's kind of like a lost leader in some way. So I think that's also worth just bearing in mind in the back of your head yeah definitely I mean, and then something like you know say monocle or ever who work really really well on um brand partnerships and they they, they curate that exceptionally well um and it's a, it's, it's a lot to invest in it but you know if you are a brand with that kind of heft behind you it's a really valuable thing to do because they will it, it's kind of working peer to peer rather yeah. than you know um just thinking well i'm just gonna chuck my money there for advertising so that's kind of on a bigger level i'd say but also um it's really important to support the trade magazines because if you don't support them financially, they're not going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. And we do Um, need them. Yeah, we do. I mean, you know, it's the the voice for your, for your industry, for your sector, whether it's, you know, working with bathrooms or, you know, engineering or building or architecture, whatever it is, if we don't have those titles, they will disappear. And we've seen that happen. Um, Other ones crop up, which is great, but you know, some of those more classic trades, um, you know, unless, yeah, once they're gone, you, you don't really get them back. I don't think. No, you don't. I mean, that's one of the things, because actually, like, like I was saying to you before, I, I actually started off my career in PR, which was, yeah, that's where I started off in an agency. So I used to work bricks and carpet tiles and cement, lighting. Yeah. <laughs> Love them. <laughs> How Love glamorous them. I was. So, yeah, it was lots of building for them. Yeah. I mean, so, <laughs> for, from a from a professional point of view, so I've been working in PR to, well, communications, similar similar length of time as you. Yeah. Um, and in this, in this sector for, um, God, 15 years, I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I've had some of my most joyous times of being working with, you know, uh, toilet making companies and doing <laughs> like trade stuff for them because you get to do some really great things and you can see the results, you know. It's not glamorous. No, it's all. not, but it's necessary and there's it's a market necessary. for it. It's real, um, you know, and you're supporting businesses and, and, and what they want to do. And um, I think you can have a really, really positive relationship with your trade titles, um, get to know them and um, and build those relationships up and then, then you can do some really interesting things whatever your product whether it's yeah bricks you know whether it's materials <laughs> anything there's there's a there's a place for everything okay we have one more person who's done something creative which was stacy who has been to the theater too she went to see dimitri at the new marilyn bone theater but she does have a theater blog which she does which is very good actually follow her on instagram uh okay so let's go on with the question so how can pr help to grow my business or a business or any business yeah, that's no, that's a really, really good question. Um, PR is, which can also be substituted with communications, is really part of your overall business function. You need to kind of think about it at the beginning. You think about it when you're setting your goals and objectives for the for the year for the business, um, and then think how are you going to, um, what are you going to need to communicate? Who's going to want to hear your ideas, your product? Where do you need growth? Um, who are those people going to be that are your growth targets? And um, once you've kind of done those kind of uh, that area of research and objective setting, then you can use the PR tools to kind of get there and map it out. So I think, you know, I, I always like to have like a, a structured approach, plan your time, do your research, think, you know, I've got, we're talking about press without projects, but you might have a project coming up in, you know, uh, eight months it'll be completing and you've got all yeah. that time to think okay what are the stages there that I can work with how do I talk about the issues um it might be retrofit for example you know how do I how do I talk about retrofit 
for um you know three to four months beforehand and build up some really good stories in the different um different kind of um uh, channels to then support the ultimate project um and what that will do in terms of like helping give value to your business um is it will show that you're the experts that yeah. you understand what people want um you've done research into your the people who are buying your services um whatever whatever that is um and you're answering their questions and anticipating their questions so i think by that way you you build up your reputation as someone people can trust yeah which is really important um and that you know what you're talking about those two i think are the main things you're going to really add value then so people you're going to make it easy for people to find you and to buy from you I think on top of that, I think it's also the area of third party endorsement. It's not you just saying how great you are. It's somebody else. Look, it's building magazine. It's it, it's someone else who's independent from me actually saying this. And I think that That's also true. resonates with people because sometimes you can think actually they're just talking about themselves all the time. But actually, if you've got other people saying it, it's it's more believable. I think that, that yeah. level of trust. So yeah, it's yeah. It's incredibly, um, it's incredibly helpful with that third party um, recognition. And the other thing which we're talking about with your um, website um podcast earlier getting those backlinks is really important and that's something that's yeah. quantifiable um which again is is the the analytics and um google people seeing how valid third party recognition is by having a backlink it's it's going to boost your visibility as well. ties together this week it's like it's a <laughs> okay so what is the best approach i can take to pr to make an impact Ooh, um, planet, planet, research, planet. That's the most thing. It's like the really dull, boring stuff. Um, get, get, do your homework. That's the, if you, if you do your homework and get the foundations right, then you'll be able to kind of fly and do the kind of great buzzy things that you want to do. But yeah. doing a, a, a kind of sparkly little thing and um, whatever it is without the backup of, of having done your foundational work on what you're, objectives are who your real markets are who's really going to make a difference for your business it's just going to go nowhere really so so yeah. to, make, to really make an impact you need to have it have a real kind of thorough plan you can change it and um you know uh, respond so what, to what else is going on so what sort of things would you have in that plan what kind of things would you need to cover oh good point um so that you would need to cover yeah your goals your objectives for the business um who you're talking to, your target market. I always think it's um, a nice thing to do um, to build your personas, proper marketing personas, um, especially for <laughs> especially for people <laughs> who are not used to doing communications, because it's a way to kind of get in the in the skin of it and really understand who your yeah. customers are. Um, at least customer in the in the broadest sense. Um, so uh, once you have the personas there, it will really help bring to life what you're going to do when you know that you know. Um, so and so is going to be really interested in I don't know something with a, a collaboration with someone, for example, yeah. um, that they really love that brand. You know, it, it'll start to kind of open up what's going to really make an impact for you. Um, and also make sure that you set um, in your objectives, um, make sure that you set um, ways that you're going to measure it. Yeah, as well, because you can get to the end of it and think, oh well, that was great, wasn't it, guys? <laughs> what? <laughs> we haven't tracked anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so there are ways you can do that as well yeah. to kind of measure it um whether it's just you know counting uh press coverage number of people number of mentions all those kind of things but also a feeling and you know a general kind of idea and yeah you know do some research pick up the phone speak to people what? find out what they think <laughs> <laughs> no thanks <laughs> no? <laughs> it's surprisingly good but surprisingly helpful way of doing it I, I definitely do that with them um, with some companies if I'm doing like a full kind of full package um do some research find out what people um think about them and literally pick up the phone you can get is this a is lot. this where I admit that I normally jump out of the skin out of my skin if if my phone rings because I'm so not used to it <laughs> I know. What? what is that? <laughs> Just completely. <laughs> it, yeah, it is weird. It, it, it is a weird thing, but it's worth doing. Sometimes you might need to plan the phone call. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, people yeah. are aware. And talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. On, on their yeah. Times. Okay. So, um, 
So what PR opportunities are open to a firm aside from projects? What could they be talking about? Well, this is also an excellent question. I know. Um, talk about what you know, um, talk about what you think and talk about what's interesting to other, other people as well. So you could be talking about um, a material, you know, your favorite bricks, whatever it is, you know, that you're really yeah. interested in. Um, you could be talking about what's going on with, um, you know, environmental issues, if that's your thing. Um, and I've got like, a, there's a little, little um, moniker, which is called Ideas, which I'll read out to you because it's very Go helpful. Ahead. Talk about like, so I's for industry, any industry kind of um, issues. D's for data, as you're saying, get your data sorted. Yeah. E is events, what else is going on? What are you involved in? A is for associates, who are you working with? Your who are you buddies. collaborating with? Yeah. Who's your supplier? Who are you supplying to? And the S is for seasonal. So we're all living in the same place. You know, what are people going to be interested in now? Are they going to be interested in, you know, light um, issues? Yeah, I think, you know, the the um, uh, Homes magazines always do light features in winter, for yeah. example. This is yeah. kind of a seasonal flow as well. So that's ideas for content. I like that. It's really good. It isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's really simple because yeah. I because you're right. And I mean, I do lots of kind of observational stuff. So, you know, like when stuff happens and I'm like, oh, actually, what does that mean? Or they've annoyed me. That's the other one I do. They've annoyed me. Um, <laughs> that's good. That's good. And that, that speaks to the point of like, what what are you passionate about? Yeah. And, you know, every single person has something they're passionate about. Um, and, you know, particularly, I think, in the creative industries, that is really aligned to your work as well. Um yeah. Um, you know, I think so there, there will always be something where you you're really like, you know, what are you talking about in the office or, you know, with yeah. your colleagues? Or what's, what's your take on what's happening in the news or I mean, maybe not always so political, but that kind of thing, isn't it? I guess it's it's that is that stuff. So yeah. in, in terms of journalists, what do they want from companies? What are they looking for? And I know you did some research. Um, I did do some research. I thought I'll start with research. I always like starting with research. I asked some of uh, the people I've worked with um, for their for their tips and so on. I mean, fortunately, they all pretty much came back immediately. So I think they were really pleased to be asked um, again for, for what they want. So um, tips are avoid nerdy jargon um, speak clear, plain English. They want uh, simple information relayed quickly as well um and uh, make sure it's really clear and concise and to the point uh and uh, one person said you know just a couple of images and a few lines that's it so simple right Why do Super you simple. It so long? i know i think we can be overloaded with information for, for journalists and you have to understand that journalists are super busy they're getting yeah. a million things through they want to be have the right information but they need that kind of first headline uh, of, of clear information whatever it is um and um yeah i mean more for projects i suppose I've, i have had like a don't show me any old old, old projects don't show me any competitions <laughs> uh, unsuccessful competition entries i don't want to look at those so you know I'm like, who said this but also just just to really do the do the basic what stage what stage is it at when when are things going to be coming out yeah when's planning you know when's it going to be photographed just really really you know facts and keep it simple um sometimes keeping it simple is more difficult than you think um, especially for a, lar a large project it's hard to know what to focus on you want to do it justice but I guess in some ways you want to give a journalist a taster isn't it it's so just a here's, here's the headlines and a few things that you might want to know yeah and then you want to kind of you want them to then get in touch that's 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 the yeah. purpose isn't it yeah absolutely and to make sure that you've got all the information that they need neatly stored filed away you know the messages are done you've got blocks of you know text on specific areas that you need to be looking at so yeah. you've got everything to hand so you can respond quickly because people want you to respond really really quickly yeah. and keep an eye out for their requests um as well um yeah and look, well i just one other tip which i have would have to let you know as well is um make sure you have a name on a website don't have an info at or a press at <laughs> actual real have a person. name <laughs> an actual person <laughs> So it's newfangled stuff that they want. <laughs> I know, I know. Anyone would think we're all people. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's understanding a bit of the, the news cycle for, for journalists is really helpful as well. 
um, and ma making sure that you follow um, the, the magazines or newspapers and yeah. journals and the journalists on, on their socials and read. And isn't like Twitter one of the best places to find journalists? Twitter is excellent, yes. And there is the, the brilliant um, hashtag journal request. Yes, which I do it's use when I'm I do use when I'm bored. <laughs> it's great. It, I don't yeah. know. You really I like yeah, so I was I was I was saying um actually, yeah, I ended up in I ended up in the independent a couple of weeks ago. Or I news, I don't know what's different. But like I ended up in that because I saw a general request talking about the rail unions and they were asking for someone to talk about how good comment how how good communicators they are. So I did piece on that and I saw that and I responded to that and wrote back to the journalist and gave her a comment for the next day so I think it's that kind of thing a quick turnaround it's all there for the taking yeah yeah absolutely absolutely you need to sort of be switched on plugged in and and you know focus on the areas that you're you're an expert on or that you're really passionate about and you you can't go wrong yeah. really if you know you know your stuff you're not going to be fumbling and they, yeah, and they, and they're looking for people to contribute. It makes their life easier. You know what I mean? They want people to come back with comments. It's easier for them to stitch a piece together, and that's that's it, isn't it? Helping yeah. them to do their job. Absolutely, and that sort of goes back in a, in a way to how the media landscape has really changed, and uh, people are really short on time, and are filing yeah. quickly for online pieces a lot as well. Yeah, the speed of it is crazy. Mm. So I've sent off this beautiful crafted email, short to the point, did all the stuff it was meant to do. What happens if I don't hear back, Hannah? Do I need to ring up and go, hello? <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> do not do that. Did you get my press release? I sent it. I sent it no. six times. <laughs> <laughs> you will be blocked. You'll, yeah. No, don't do that. Um, I think in what you can do in your beautifully crafted pitch email, which will have a fantastic title, heading, subject heading, saying exactly what is in it, with your keywords yeah. of you know whatever it is architecture home residential so journalists can quickly search when they're looking for a story after that at the bottom of your um email you can write i'll contact you in a couple of days to see if this works for you question mark something like that or yeah. you know that th you've already given yourself an opportunity to come back in a couple of days or a couple of hours if it's something really really quick yeah so go back when you said you would go back and then okay. if you don't hear back. Don't keep chat handing like a dog. Okay, uh, Stacey just added to your comment, actually. She said, uh, the headline on the press release is very important, as is the email subject line, which is a first absolutely. point of selling the release to the journal. As yeah. A journal. Yeah, so that is Absolutely. Completely... Yeah, and I mean, if it's, if it's news, very few things of news or breaking news, to be honest, really. Yeah. Um, but you might have a new product, in which case, say, new product or new building. Um, or opinion colon yeah to make it, it easy for them it. to find it and know where to put you right and that's the thing isn't it oh, I need some opinion pieces great I'll look and see what's coming under that heading right yeah yeah, yeah exactly so, so yeah it boils but down to being clear again doesn't it because like you could sit there and go I need this really arty headline and it's like no be clear because I haven't got the time to read everything yeah, yeah yeah you need to be able to get your whole message across in 10 words that's a challenge. That is hard. Few words are hard. Yeah. Few words so, are hard. <laughs> how do I know what to talk about? <sighs> Good question. It's yeah. um yeah, it's I think often people also think, well, I you know, I don't know what to say. I don't know um if it's gonna sound right or are people gonna be interested? Um it goes back to um research, planning. You need to make sure that, you know, you're really all over what, what you're doing, whatever it is, a project, building, scheme, team, reorganisation, whatever it is. Um, you're, you're all over it. And then also have worked out what else do people want to hear. Yeah. Um, and you can use, um, you know, in the research thing, again, speak to your clients, speak to your existing clients, yeah. find out um, what they need to know. What are the bugbears? What are the things that they always ask? And if you're able to respond to their questions, then that's also, you know, really helpful. You're preempting what, what they're going to be um, asking anyway. Yeah. No, I think that's so a good I would point. say that. And do, you know, do, do, once you've done all that, you need, you need to do your messaging. Pick three key messages that you want to get across. Keep it simple. Yeah. And then just keep repeating it. Because that's, but I mean, okay. We, 
I'm, I'm just thinking about the conversation we had before we came online. I know. I think, I think we need to go Not there. Not too much. All right. No. What's, a, what's a bad example, Hannah, of repeating a message? <laughs> That was in the past week. I, yeah, I can't do that. Just think of three words you say consecutively. It doesn't always work. Just being no. done. Okay, yeah. we are. We, we are. If you watch Digress. the... Digress. <laughs> that was appalling. Uh, anyway, so... <laughs> messaging. Very, very important. Messaging is important. Uh, but I was just, just like my addition. Messaging is really important. You also need to tailor it to your different markets or the different people that you're talking to and make sure it's yeah. relevant to them. Okay. Which goes back to the... All right, I'm going to say what it was. It was basically, uh, I think, the Liz Truss interviews that she did with all the regional uh, BBC radio, BBC, BBC radio stations, and it was the fact that every interview, she was clearly on message, but she clearly wasn't answering any questions at all. So, so to us... study of what not yeah, to do. And it's like, if you yeah. listen to them, if you listen to every interview back-to-back, -back, of which I think it's about seven interviews, it is just awful. Because... <laughs> It's like, it you're is. a message, but this is really bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so you also need to be human in whatever it is you're, <laughs> you're communicating. Respond to your environment and, and the different people, different journalists have different personalities and they're interested in different things. Yeah. Um, yeah. You tailor that message to that audience and that particular person and what you're being yes. asked. And that's that's the hardest bit because actually it's you've got your baseline messages, but that tailoring is so important. And I think just having the kind of flexibility to do that. Because it's funny because I... I often think my job is to say the same thing over and over again, but in different ways. It's like, that's what my job is. It's like, you know, I'm on message. It's still the same campaign over six months, but actually I'm finding different ways to say the same thing. Um, yeah. and, and that is the skill because that's how you get the message to stick. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, keeping it, keeping it relevant, you know, as well, tweaking yeah. it or, you know, finding a way that it, you know, things lead back to, to your main message as well. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so how do I know I'm not going to say something that I shouldn't? What things do I need to have in place so I don't trip myself up? Uh huh. Um, I would get your um, if you're if you're in an interview situation, get your key messages there. Practice, practice it if you're doing a live interview um, with with someone with a media outlet. Um, practice with colleagues um, make sure that you've cleared your messages if you're with a big organization make sure that you know you've cleared with your communications person checked yeah. it all um, and uh, do a sort of sense check definitely um, and just keep it real I think that's the yeah I think also if you if you are talking about certain projects or certain clients make sure you've got permission to talk about them yeah because I think that's the other thing where people suddenly are in front of a journalist and it's just, Ugh! and you're just there going, no, really, you can't do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, my other thing is, nothing is off the record. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you are in a really sticky corner and you've kind of went, boxed yourself in, start your conversation or repeat your conversation, this is completely off the record beforehand. Some people will really honour that. Definitely the, you know, um yeah, the, the most of the journalists I work with, they, they will honour it, but yeah. you don't don't want to get into that position in the first place. No, no, it's too much. You're yeah. yourself into a corner. It's like it doesn't make sense to do that. I yeah, that absolutely. Thing. Yeah, it's 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 not never gonna end well really. Um, um We've got a lovely, nice comment from uh, Julia Nichols. It says, finding the human story behind your project is important too. Why would it re resonate with others and stand out to journalists and readers? That's such yes. a good point. Yeah, Come absolutely. On. Absolutely. And I think that also translates to when you're doing your um, architectural photography as well. Oh, Actually, yeah. There are people in this place, you know. It's... Empty buildings are the worst pictures. Yeah. So yeah. boring. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't really work unless you're really into yeah. angles. Yes, which some people are, but I think it's that whole functional use of this is a building in place, it's got life, and it comes into its own when people actually use it rather than being. Yes, yeah, it is generally created for people, so <laughs> make sure there are people there. Um, but yeah, to, to Julia's point as well about the human story, I mean, you can also tell the story behind the building as well, which is great. Oh, I love about those. The team, yeah. yeah. Um, the journey of an architect from, you know, going from an assistant to, to you know, wherever they're now, director, you know, all that kind of side and, and looking at your internal communications as well. It's just as important. Um, I think every single person in your 
um, organization or practice is a little ambassador for what you're doing. So by you know celebrating them and showing what what they're doing, then then you're really you're not going to lose anything there. You're only going to gain. I think the people stories get so much more traction as well, don't they? That's the stuff that people actually it touches the heart, isn't it? Yeah. And, and and that's the thing is those are the stories that connect with people. Absolutely, know, yeah. Human. I think they're, it's definitely the way forward of let's talk about our people and the amazing stuff that they're doing or what they're trying yeah. to do, what they're learning, what they're bringing to, to schemes and their ideas, because that, that's a lot more interesting. That's something that your competitors don't have. They don't have your people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's that kind of old other, you know, people buy people. It's, I mean, it's not a transactional thing, but it's true. You know, we are all human and, yeah. and we relate to each other in all okay. those ways. So my final question on this bit is, so if I'm not a writer, what else can I be doing in terms of PR? Mm -hmm. um, photographs, go talk about the image, first of all. Um, you can, I would say, you know, incorporating within, within PR all channels, including something like Instagram, if you are a visual person and you, and you, you speak images rather, rather than words, you know, set up your Instagram account accordingly, make sure you have a focus on whatever it is that you're passionate about, whether it is, you know, shadows from buildings on, you know, whatever, mm. whatever it is, whatever your niche is, or materials, use images um, to tell a story um, equally, you know, plan that content, make sure there's regular content, but you can use images very, very powerfully. Um, we're talking earlier about um, Ken Shuttleworth as well, drawing, being it's like, thing, yeah thing yeah that that's the thing it's an amazing way to communicate um uh podcasts Never audio stuff great <laughs> um yeah i mean you know uh, you know speaking um i mean if you if you don't if you're really not into writing um lots of people are, if you're dyslexic and you just don't like the typing thing there's great um voice activated uh, you know voice software yeah. Like Otter is one that's that's really great. Um, so you can just speak, set up to have a conversation with a colleague, record it all, and then get that transcribed. Um, you know, and that's your post, it, yeah. Just and that's your post. Out. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's there's lots of way point. around it. That's lots. Yeah. That's very good. Okay, so to close out each episode this week, what we've ha had is just I mean, it's not necessarily, it's not quick fire at all. But anyway, what we've had is <laughs> I asked people what tools or resources should they be using to do, and this time it will be PR, what's out there that I should know about. So yeah. I know we talked about journal request, hashtag journal yes. request. Yes, hashtag one, journal request there? is excellent. And also you get a good idea of what journalists are really looking for in real time, which you might not otherwise do. Yeah. Um, I would say um, read, 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 read. Make sure you um, subscribe to um, magazines and your industry titles and read them and get to understand what um, people are really interested in. Yeah. Um, that's, I would go, one my other um, uh, tool, I suppose, is the ideas kind of thing. You know, stick that somewhere on your wall, I do, to make sure that you've got, you know, you're constantly looking for all those different elements of stories. Um, and use uh, Google, Google search, it's excellent. Um, and yeah. Google Analytics to find out what people really are asking that you might not expect, so that then yeah, you can find a way of answering their questions. And there's also tools like Answer the Public, isn't there, where you can find out the questions that people are asking now yeah. in your certain segments and all that, that kind of stuff, which is actually very, very good, and it helps you kind of frame what's going on and see what's going on. And Google Trends as well is quite good, isn't it? Yeah. You can kind yeah. of see roughly what people are talking about has the conversation for sustainability gone up and all that kind of stuff. It's like your barometer as well. So those Absolutely. are all kind of tools that you can use, which are good. Fantastic. Yeah. So how do Great. people find out more about you, Hannah? Um, more about me? Well, LinkedIn, obviously, I'm here. Yes. Um, I have a, a shopfront uh, website, which is hannahcoxcreative.com, which has nothing on it. It's just a blank page with a phone number <laughs> to give me a call. So where's the person? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> but um, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, that is it from this live week of recording the Built Environment Marketing Show live. Ah, I'm done. I'm going to go off and have a cocktail. Well, I haven't. I've got a client meeting in 25 minutes. Uh, and then uh, the podcast recordings uh, are now going to be uh, released live not release live, release every Friday uh, from today <laughs> in all the main kind of podcast outlets. So that's, it, it's out now. So the Tom Garfield one is out today and then the only will be out next Friday and so on and so on. So that's it really. And thank you Amazing. for listening. Take care.
Bye. Bye. Oh, come back.